there guys, it's Joey, and this is going to be the correspondences video to the Ogum Ash or Nin and the pronunciation taken from Aaron Lawrence's information there are seem to be multiple ways of gi giving us pronounce, pronouncing sorry pronouncing it's a good start to a video when you talking nonsense right so this video is going to be correspondences and I went over a lot of the information and what I've decided to do is have the correspondences video which we're going to talk about correspondences and then my interactions with energies that have correlated, lined up and have thus far into connecting deeper with the yoga shown themselves as being of important and that's colours and crystals and things of that nature we're also going to have a simple connecting to the Ogham spell type thing following this. And then a little bit later on today I'm going to record Magical Correspondences of Ash itself. So this is more about sort of correspondences in general and then we'll have a look at Magical Correspondences of the Wood, the Bark the root, the leaf, and, and that in a separate video because I think it's important to sort of distinguish between the two and have that information readily available because otherwise it's a little bit information overload with regards to what we're actually looking at. So for this video it's going to be mainly based on astrological correspondences as well as elementary correspondences, planetary, elementary, colours that sort of interweave in that and we will briefly touch on some of the magical meanings and things as well as how to go about connecting the dots with regards to magical workings if you want to include other crystals, other herbs within Ogham magic centred around the Ogham Nin or Ash. So, first and foremost, some of the correspondences given for Ash are Sun, the planet Sun, uh, Neptune, Water and Fire, and the Moon. It's given in quite strong detail that Ash is one of those energies within the Ogham that corresponds both to the lunar and the solar energies and that's where I've really been of late is the correspondence to both and the sort of interlinking energies of both and it just came to a beautiful magical head if you like with this Ogham because that combines the influence of both. It also combines the energies of both fire and water which is a fascinating energy all in itself. Two crystals which are given in the generalised meaning are Lepidolite and Turquoise. If we take correspondences directly from herbal books, Cunningham gives the ash as being masculine sun fire as well as corresponding it with Uranus, Poseidon, Thor, Odin, Neptune, Mars and Guardian, having powers of protection, prosperity, sea rituals and health. From the Herbal Compendium, the energies, the correspondence are given as Sun, Uranus, Neptune, counter magic, fertility, love, protection magic manifestation visionary work particularly strong at healing psychic related blockages I guess you could say uh, associated with Neptune through its water correspondence as well as being associated with the adder snake and the common snipe bird Right. 
So as I was working with this in this thought process, there have been a number of things that have come to my mind quite quite quickly, quite strongly in terms of energy working with the Ogum ash. And first and foremost I'm going to mention that actually up here is Lepidolite in Ruby or Ruby and Lepidolite, uh, which corresponds with the given correspondences. And I have notes of it here. Okay. So Ruby is actually associated with the sun. Now I found it very, very interesting that the solar energies for me personally have been really, really strong this week with regards to the Ogham Ash. The colour gold, so I have two little gold candles, have come up over and over and over again, as well as pyrite. Pyrite is also gold and associated with the sun. So if we take solar correspondences whilst working with the energy of the Ogham ash, it means that we can draw on that connection, that thread of energy, and pull down different correspondences that may influence how we choose to work with the Ogham Ash. Here I'm going to mention that if it were me I would be balancing lunar and solar energies within a whole spell working with Ash and or focusing on one element, one aspect of the Ogham. So perhaps if you just wanted to work within the realm of the solar energy you could just primarily focus on solar healing or confidence, wealth, abundance, things like that. So some solar correspondences, obviously Sunday, uh, which is today, is the day associated with the sun. Authority, divine power, friendships, healing, lessons, reason, God, mysteries, employment, the law, prosperity, money, protection, male energies, royalty, theatre, charity. Associated with the zodiac Leo, colours yellow, gold and orange, metal being gold. Uh, gold has come up over and over and over again this week. I don't actually have any little flakes of gold or anything, which is, is kind of a shame, but I do have pirate, which is fool's gold, so we're not 100, well, fairly far away, but following the gold solar energies at least. Associated stones with the solar energy are amber, ametrine, cat's eye, citrine, diamond, carnelian, golden calcite, pipestone, pyrite, pyrite, orange calcite, quartz, ruby, sunstone, tiger's eye, topaz, yellow calcite. Herbs associated with the solar energies are agrimony, alpha alpha, allspice, almond, angelica, ash, banana, bay, birch, borage, buttercup, cactus, candulia, caraway seed, century, chamomile, cinnamon, citron, copal, daisies, eyebright, frankincense, ginseng, goldenrod, and so on and so forth. I think we'll be here all day if I list them all. But what you can do readily and easily if you especially if I mean you could go online if, if you wish but if you have access to a herbal book like this they nearly always have correspondences for an astrological nature so herbs of the sun here gives a, quite a long explanation of the energies of what you would use solar herbs for. The inner seed within one's spirit is more easily brought into manifestation, manifestation, manifestation unlike my words, which every, every word a struggle. 
and then some and a whole list of herbs. And then if we take a look at Cunningham's book, he also does this. He also gives colour correspondences which you may wish to also draw upon. Just have to find where this Some, there we go. And there are the, some of the solar herbs. I will hold it there for a second. So if you want to pause the video, you can write some out. And I don't know if Cunningham does it. I don't think he does. But in the herbal compendium, at least, there is a section whereby it discusses which herbs are appropriate to which god and goddess. Now, as we discussed in the last video, Odin is associated with the ash tree. Now, also Gwydion, and Gwydion is, is perhaps more appropriate from a Celtic leaning, but he's only given as the ash correspondence. So if you wanted to engage with the god Odin, or if you followed a Nordic path, and this is something that you were apple, ash, cedar, mistletoe, and oak. So there you go. That's a deity-based correspondence for which working through the energy of the god, the, the god Odin and sort of incorporating correspondences. It would probably make a little bit more sense to go with a Nordic rune if you were doing that rather than the Celtic Ogham, but if you were working with ash in a, in a generalised sense it would, it would work just fine. I'm just wondering second. Okay, Poseidon is also in here, right? So he was one of the other gods given because of his Neptune um, correspondences, ash, olive and pine. So if you're going for more of a sea based energy you could do that. Um, that's a shame. I was hoping they might have Sulis in here. It's my dear friend Sharon honours the goddess Sulis, which is one of the Celtic solar goddesses, but apparently she's not in here. That's unfortunate. But that's ways in which you can follow the divine thread of following herbs, flowers, resins, crystals, etc. that are given in offering to particular gods and goddesses and you sort of follow the link and the idea with correspondences of this nature is that you are following a thread so you are trying to weave your own web of magic and because you are doing that you are following those correspondences to gather as much information before you start so you're looking at colors you're looking at associated crystals, you're looking at associated herbs, resins, you could even look up associated words and chants and things of that nature. It's just really where your intuition guides you. And before I move on to the lunar correspondences here, I, I am going to talk about that in a little more depth. So. I think it's really quite important when we talk about correspondences that we say, you know, it's not the be all and end all to follow a list given of correspondences. For me, it seems to me the more that you engage with particular forms of magic work, spell work, energy work, things will become a sort of synchronized delivery method and you will become more aware of certain symbols and messages around you 
this week I've been overtly aware of gold, of copper, which we'll discuss in a minute, uh, women in armour, very solar based women in armour with particular sort of beads across um, their heads and across their faces and it's almost Arabic in nature which sort of pushes back to the Arab Arabic music playing last week that if you've seen my vlog video you'll know about or if you're on Facebook you may know about and it's for me it's being aware of all of those things, making a note of them so your intuition is picking up on the things that you need to be aware of, making a note of them and then checking them against the correspondences because that can help you see where the interlinking chains are, not necessarily following a straight list. For So for in future we're going to look at magical correspondences to do with like creating your own uh, magics and spell works and things to do with the ogum. So if you wanted to include a specific herb and you felt really really strongly about it but it wasn't solar then to be honest you should go with your intuition above all things. So as I said copper is another one and metal has been very prevalent this week, very prevalent. Let's pop some copper up here. This ogum doesn't like to behave itself, it likes to roll over. <laughs> How about if we stand you that way? You... Oh, you'll stand up that way. Alright, fair enough. Um, <laughs> copper is actually associated with water and Venus. Now, Venus isn't a energy in particular that we're looking at here, but water is. And because it has that watery correspondence but it also sort of interlinks with the idea of metal right now and that sort of comes off something else that comes off the energies of last week when or was it the week before brain is gone because of migraine about dates um where we were seeing keys coins and compasses becoming very very important and all the symbolism deep and rich that was within them and metals has kind of bridged the gap between coins and things of that nature into this week which seems more to be like chains and armour and the interlinking and the protective elements that you can find the warlike energies of the protective warlike solar goddess that is coming through in at least in my feeling and experience with the correspondences of the ogum, noon or ash. So then when we look at the lunar energies, uh, it's associated with Monday, moon day, tomorrow. So it may be that the energy, the lunar side of it starts really playing up tomorrow. That's what I expect to happen. And it's associated with the zodiac sign, cancer and magic for cooking, dreams, family, the home, intuition, medicine, spiritual growth and the ocean. So the sort of watery lunar moon energy comes through. It's also associated with silver, light blue, pale yellow, orchid and lavender. Blue and green, making up the sort of turquoise, are colours that are associated with the ogum. It's actually associated with silver rather than gold or copper. So I'd be interested to see if I start getting an influx of silver images and things as of tomorrow. Associated with amethyst, aquamarine, beryl, cat's eye, chalodont, sea, diamond, moonstone, mother of pearl, quartz, rainbow moonstone, sapphire, sea salt, selenite. And again, we will grab the herbal correspondences for the lunar energies. Dum dum. Okay. Let's do let's do uh Cunningham's book, it's perhaps a little bit easier on camera. Okay, there is less of it actually, but there you go. I shall hold that for a second, so if you so wish, you can pause the video and write some of the lunar moon herbs down. Now it's also worth noting, particularly in the 
herbal compendium. But herbs are also given for star signs, astrological, astrological star signs. Now, Leo is given as being corresponded with the sun. And here we have herbs of Leo. And there you go. So that's another way in which you can sort of connect the dots, if you like. Uh, go about looking at how things interlink and correspond. This is just a rough guide, well I say rough guide, it's quite in depth considering, but um, I don't want it to be the be all and end all of correspondences to do with the Ogham Ash. It means that it's basically giving you a bare bone outline chart on which you start and then you go and you look at it and you're thinking, okay, uh, what resonates with me, which energy resonates with me, what am I doing with the yoga, where am I going with it, how do I feel about it, which colours, which astrological sign, which planet, uh, which day corresponds with all of that, and do I feel that the interlinking of all those energies is important. So that is basically going to be it for the correspondences, and then we're going to talk about magical correspondences of ash itself as a plant, tree, herb, however you wish to see it, or three, uh, in an, a separate video on purpose. Okay, so that's it for this video. Many blessings.